Pathogenicity versus virulence. In this video, I will be contrasting the difference between pathogenicity and virulence. Some key concepts I will touch basis on are, I'll try to contrast pathogenicity and virulence and describe why virulence can be considered an evolving property. What we know, pathogenicity is the ability of a pathogen to cause disease. Virulence describes the degree or extent of disease that a pathogen causes, whereas pathogenicity is an all or nothing term. Virulence varies. It may depend on both pathogen and host features and may evolve over time. To endure over time, a pathogen's ability to break down defense and live within a host must be balanced within the ability to transmit to others. A highly virulent pathogen which is transmitted person to person and causes high mortality outbreaks that rapidly kill or debilitate hosts usually remain geographically isolated and cause short-lived outbreaks. Over time this pathogen may evolve into one which does not kill victims right away, thus increasing the time available for transmission. Pathogenicity is the ability of a microbe to cause disease. This term is often used to describe or compare species, whereas virulence is a term used to describe the severity of a disease after infection, the degree or extent of disease that a pathogen causes. It's also known as the degree of pathogenicity in a microorganism. This term is often used to describe or compare strains within a species. Go ahead. Let's take a further look into the factors Copy affecting bacterial pathogenicity. Virulence factors include pathogen type, toxicity, aggressiveness, and transmission host. Properties such as immune fitness and normal pathogen virulence. Furthermore, virulence is the harm done by a pathogen to the host following an infection, parasite mediated morbidity and mortality in infected hosts. Harm here can mean specific signs and symptoms or a reduction in host fitness. Virulence varies dramatically among pathogens. Some like cholera and smallpox are often lethal. Others like herpeviruses and cold viruses may produce no symptoms at all. Virulence is viewed as an evolving property through interactions with humans. Our pathogen enemies evolve new virulence factors that are developed through pathogen virulence factors that evolve. As a result to selective pressures that we as humans impose on certain agents. An example of this process could be an evolution of antibiotic resistance. When bacteria changes in a way that reduces the potency of a drug or chemical design to eliminate or stop infection, one way that cells can acquire antibiotic resistance is through cell mutations that occur during DNA replication. I hope that my video has given you a clear understanding of the difference between pathogenicity and virulence and why it is considered to be an evolving property. Thank you and please feel free to share this video with others.